Greetings from right here at the Bread House. As you can see, we have the table set for communion. And listen, you are able to partake in communion right in your living room, right at your house from anywhere. Jesus never asked us to remember his birth. He only asked us to remember his death. And he said, for as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Communion is one of the two sacred ordinances of the church. The other is baptism. I want you to understand a couple things about communion. You can do it as often as you like. That's why Jesus said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. There's been a lot of discussion about whether we should take communion at church only or at home, where I'm here to answer that question for you. You can take it wherever you like, and you do not have to be an ordained official to do it. Now, in church, in our public or corporate worship, we only allow the administration of communion to be done by ordained officials of the church because of the way we do things in corporate worship. But at your house, you are the ordained official. Now, I want to talk, take you back to the moment that, that where communion comes from. It's all about when Jesus had his last supper with his disciples before his life turned from greatness to crucifixion. And I want you to understand that when he was having this, 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 this supper with them, a lot of things took place. It was not an ordinary supper, but it was a supper where Jesus would spell out the events of his death and his crucifixion as well as his resurrection. But he also revealed some very important truths about the disciples sitting at his table. Here's something you can learn. One of the disciples sitting at his, his table was Judas. Guess what he did for Judas? We know Judas. Judas is the one who betrayed him. And what Jesus did to the one that betrayed him is magnificent. He fed his enemy. That's a revelation that all of us can use to feed our enemy. Even those who hurt us, who mistreat us, we still have a responsibility to feed them. And listen, I want you to understand Jesus gave us revelation in just that principle alone. Let's get to communion. What we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through doing communion right here on this video, but you can follow along at your house. This is for those who just can't make it to church, but still want to partake in communion. Let me give you a couple of things that you'll want to remember. You do not have to have the sacrament that we use in church. I'll tell you what will work. Any type of bread and any type of grape juice. And if you take a little bit of that, you could take one slice of bread and break it off for members of your family to use, and then you can use any type of grape juice to partake in communion. So once you have your contents, now we can partake in the actual activity of communion. When we get ready to take communion, the first thing we do is we go to the scripture. Everything we do, this is what makes it an ordinance of the church. The first thing we do is go to the Bible. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, it says, For I have received the Lord, that which also I delivered unto him, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. And I want to say that that's the word of the Lord from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. Now, the next step you're going to need is to pray. And let me tell you specifically what we pray for. Specifically what we pray for is that God prepares us, prepares our hearts and our spirits to partake of this sacred act. The Bible declares that to do so unworthily causes you to drink damnation unto your own soul. 
So what we, what we do is the Bible also tells us is that we can only do communion or partake in communion when we have freed our spirit or our heart of any ought against our brother or our sister. The Bible says, for this reason, many are sick among you. So when you read the scripture and then you pray, you pray that God forgive you and that you forgive other people. Here's a great prayer to pray before you take communion. Pray the Lord's Prayer. You know, the one that says, Our Father, which art in heaven, pray that prayer, and that will pretty much prepare you for taking communion. I'm not going to pray that prayer today, but I'm going to pray along with you uh, over some things that you would want to cover in your prayer before taking communion. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for a chance to commemorate your death and what you did on Calvary's cross for the sins of this world. Father, I pray that you would search my heart for any unforgiveness, for any alt against my brother or my sister. I pray that you would cleanse me, that I may be worthy to partake in such a communion act as this. Lord, have your way. Make me worthy of this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer sincerely, you are ready to partake in communion. Now, the Bible says, that on that night that he had this supper, he identified two disciples specifically. He identified the disciple that would betray him, that's Judas, and he also identified the disciple that would deny him, that's Peter. And then the Bible says that he took the bread, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, just like we bless our food. He, he, he took the bread, he broke it, and he blessed it and said, this is my body, which will be broken for thee. You may eat. Likewise, he took the cup and said, this is the New Testament in my blood, which will be shed for thee. You may drink. The Bible declares that on that same day, after they experienced the Lord's Supper, the Bible says that they went out to the Mount of Olives and fellowshiped one with another. Now, you may not have the same Mount of Olives that they had in Scripture, but you do have your living room, your kitchen area, your dining room. Fellowship and love one another because this is a celebration for what God did for us on the cross. That is communion all in a nutshell. Let me give you a dismissal prayer. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to have stood in your presence. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us both now and forevermore until we all meet again. In Jesus, the Christ's name we pray, amen. May God bless you. Have a good day.